tonight. A former MP from this province is arrested for taking the law into his own hands. Peter Panashwe is in a feud with a man he says is dealing drugs in Chehajit. Why he wants local RCMP to step up. I don't know exactly what we're going to experience, but every colleague I know who's seen Total Solar Eclipse, they tell me it's total eclipse or nothing. Plus, Newfoundland and Labrador gets ready for a front row seat to the astronomical show of the year. The season is well underway here at Smoky Mountain. I stopped by to chat with a few people about the hill and to try not to get too cold. I'll have that story coming up. This is CBC Here and Now. Good evening and welcome to Here and Now. Former Labrador MP Peter Panashaway is facing a criminal mischief charge tonight after a long simmering dispute boiled over in Shahajit. Panashaway says he was fueled by his frustration with drug dealing in the community and police inaction. You see me? That's a short video of his arrest. Panashwe shared it on social media Saturday. Police arrived shortly after Panashwe broke out all the windows of a vehicle parked outside his son's home. Panashwe says his son is addicted to cocaine and agreed to transfer ownership of that home to former Inu Grand Deputy Chief. Uh, uh, Jeremy Andrew in exchange for drugs. Panashwe says the RCMP won't do anything about drug dealers in Shahajit, so he took the matters into his own hands. But it didn't take the police very long to uh, come out and, uh, and, uh, and uh, arrest me. It took me about, uh, I'd say, no more than uh, no more than five, ten minutes. They showed up and arrested me and put the arm uh, handcuffs on me and uh, arrested me. And uh, so it's, uh, I don't know, I don't understand what's going on. Like, like uh, Jeremy and the drug dealers here are very well protected by the police. And uh, I'm starting to wonder if there's, uh, if there's um, um, crooked uh, police officers in the, in, the, in the RCMP, in the community. Well, the RCMP have declined our request for an interview. They did send a statement instead saying police in Shahajit are dedicated to the enforcement of all criminal activities within the community. The RCMP writes, quote, our police officers rely heavily on community involvement to help to enforce local crimes, uh, particularly those involving drug trafficking, drug investigations, require reliable and recent information on activities that are occurring in the community. Now, the RCMP says it has received some anonymous reports of drug activity, but not enough to support an investigation. Meanwhile, Andrew says he's not a drug dealer, that the transfer of the home to him is legal, and Panashaway has been targeting him for a while. That's all he knows what to say right now, because he has no other avenue. He says he's going to take me to court. There's nothing he can take to court. He's not going to take me to the bank council. The drugs are rampant in our community. Mm -hmm. You know? Rampant. There's, a, there's an epidemic of drugs in our community. Well, in other news, police have charged a man in relation to a fatal crash in St. John's in December. 38-year-old Rodney Constantine is accused of impaired driving causing death and impaired driving causing harm, among other charges. Police say he drove an SUV into a home on Empire Avenue in the early morning of December 10th. A 32-year-old man died at the scene and two other people were seriously injured. All of those injured were inside the vehicle. Well, the federal and provincial government announced a $256 million health care agreement today in Cornerbrook. It happened during an announcement at the new hospital set to open in June. This province is one of 11 that received a health transfer from the federal government. The money is part of a three-year plan to improve the health care system, all part of the equalization payments first announced in 2023. There's cash for things like surgery backlog, 19 families, family care teams and better virtual care options in rural areas. That money will also go towards modernizing patients' health care records by making them accessible and electronic. 
This is about moving us forward faster. It's about making sure that folks get access to the, uh, the care that they need uh, at the speed they need to get it. So making sure that we have the doctors, the nurse practitioners, the nurses, that they have access to being able to use more flexible options like virtual care, that we have greater community capacity, particularly in rural and remote communities, to access mental health services, help with substance abuse. Well, milk production has resumed at Central Dairy's facility in Mount Pearl. A fire tore through the facility last week, destroying a warehouse and putting a pause on milk processing. All the while, Central Dairy's is being sold to a newly formed dairy cooperative. Elizabeth Witten has that story. A fire at Central Dairy's hasn't halted the sale of the plant. AgroPure is in the process of finalizing the sale with the Newfoundland and Labrador Dairy Cooperative. Never heard of it? That's because it was incorporated in November. Crosby Williams of Pondview Farm in St. John's is part of the dairy cooperative. He says 19 farmers have banded together, and when they take over Central Dairies, it will be 100% locally owned. I think that this is going to be a great thing for the industry, for both the consumers customers and I and the farmers as well and I think the future is bright for the dairy industry in this province. AgriPure spokesperson Guillaume Belroube says selling central dairies to a local cooperative made sense. They are remote from uh, other markets and they also have to bear alone the uh, high cost of transporting their milk over long distance. The deal is set to close in the coming months. In the meantime, Belle Roubaix says that after cleanup and repair work, production resumed at Central Dairies on Tuesday. Elizabeth Witten, CBC News, St. John's. temperatures today across the province sitting a little bit below where we should be sitting this time of year typically around two or three degrees maybe a little bit higher than that that temperature of three degrees in st john's was earlier this morning and that temperature has been dropping uh, through a good chunk of the day most of labrador sitting well below zero today especially up across nain sitting at about minus 11 and these temperatures very cool uh, compared to where we were sitting yesterday in fact about eight degrees colder in St. John's uh, today or right now. A little bit warmer though, up across parts of Labrador, Churchill Falls, about six degrees warmer at the moment. We are sitting under a beautiful ridge of high pressure, although those temperatures, like I said, are a tad cool, but lots of sunshine in uh, the forecast or across the province today, I should say, but yes, lots of cold air in behind that. And if we uh, take a look at uh, where we're sitting right now, the harbor, beautiful shot of that as well. We're sitting at about minus two with those winds generally light thanks to that ridge of high pressure. Now, temperatures are going to warm up as we get towards the end of the week. We'll get into all of that when I come back. Thank you, Ashley. Well, the countdown is on for the total solar eclipse. In two weeks, the skies will go dark in many parts of the province as the moon blocks the sun. Gander is on what's called the path of totality. Here now's Troy Turner has more on what's planned for the big event. It will cross all countries in North America, but Newfoundland will be the final stop in the continent for the total solar eclipse. St. John's will have a 98% partial or so. Corner Brook will be about the same, but in between there's something called the path of totality where we have a total solar eclipse for about two or three minutes the sky will go completely dark. And that path of totality in Newfoundland and Labrador will pass through this, the town of Gander. It'll be a spectacle for everyone, but for some the occurrence also has scientific value. A century ago when Albert Einstein created general relativity, one of the first tests was to look for the bending of light as light from stars came towards us, passed by the sun. But since we can't see the stars during the day, we need a solar eclipse to block the sunlight and so we can see, what, see those stars all appear to be in a slightly different place because of the bending of light. That, was the, that helped prove general relativity. So we have things today like GPS and more and, and a great field of science was built in the last century because of it. Nielsen grew up in Newfoundland but worked away for years. He's happy to be home to experience it. This is my first total solar eclipse. So I don't know exactly what we're going to experience, but every colleague I know who's seen total solar eclipse, they tell me it's total eclipse or nothing. So I think we're going to experience rain or shine or cloud, dark skies, change, changes during the day. It's just a surreal, it's going to be a surreal experience. It'll be great, greater if we have sunny weather, 
but you know, even if clouds and a bit of rain, it'll still be great. The town of Gander is putting together a four-day celebration to mark the event. We have a lot of different groups who are involved. We've reached out, of course, to the University of Different Departments, the Johnson Geo Center, the College of the North Atlantic, and the local schools. And uh, we have uh, just about dotted all the I's and crossed the T's. The event will close with the eclipse on April 8th. The uh, sky is going to go start to go dark at about 4.10 or so. So beginning at about 3.30 here where we're standing at the college parking lot, uh, we'll have events for kids, family events, to tide people over until the real event happens. Totality uh, will come about 5.10 or so, total darkness. So rain or shine or snow, and it's going to get dark in the pretty much in the middle of the day. But even if it is a dull day like, like we have today, the sky will still go dark in that portion of the sky. So while the, the, the weather may block it out a bit, there will be no question, we will be in total darkness. Now that preparations are in the final stages, all that's left really is to get the word out. Organizers are hoping hundreds, if not thousands, will be here in this parking lot come April 8th when the skies go dark. Troy Turner, CBC News, Gander. The nominees for the 2024 Music Counts Teacher of the Year are Zida Ale, Robert Bailey, Elizabeth Bouchard Bernier, Sarah Comerford. Well, it was the biggest night in Canadian music, and St. John's teacher Sarah Comerford was part of the action. Nominated for Music Can's Teacher of the Year, the McDonald Drive teacher did not win, but she did get to enjoy all the Juno festivities. Are you ready for a rumble? The Juno goes to the Swinging Bells. Well, this win marks the second Juno for the Swinging Bells, handed out by fellow Newfoundlander Davna Doyle. The talented trio won for their children's album, Welcome to the Flea Circus. To say that we're speechless <laughs> uh, would be very true. Uh, we didn't prepare a speech. No. <laughs> we, don't, uh, we didn't write any notes because um, we knew that we didn't have to thank too many people because we made this album completely on our own. <laughs> yes! <laughs> but, we, but we do want to say a few thanks uh, to Megan McNeil, who did the artwork, uh, to the wonderful young producer, who is Isaac Andrews Power, who added the electro to our swing. Uh, he's a wonder, he went as DJ, I love my cat for this album, uh, but you can also check him out as Wintercoat 7. Oh. There he is, there it is! to uh, our teachers. We'd like to thank Bishop Field. Oh, and our parents. And that's it. When people talk about skiing and snowboarding in Newfoundland and Labrador, they often forget about Smoky Mountain here in beautiful Labrador West. The ski hill has been around for decades and is a hot spot here in the community. Now, while it does get a little bit chillier here than the two hills on the island, they do have a lot of snow skiers and snowboarders. Now if this is something that you didn't know about, let me tell you. Been here since the age of seven, skiing and snowboarding for a while, but it's awesome. It's a diverse terrain. We've got some great little steeps. We've got some great little walls. We've got, you know, lots of cruising, a little bit of, of something for everyone. You can get your adrenaline up pretty nicely on this hill. Very few hills I ski where I stop and look down, especially in the Maritimes, and think, how am I going to pick my way down through here? There's times, you know, you stop at the top of 45 and see where you're going. I had a lot of friends who were coming up, and I, at the time I was working here, so it was definitely a fun activity. So it's really about the town, the change in the town. The kids are staying here, getting jobs at the mine, and they're having kids. And you know, so all of a sudden we have a hill full of youth, and then their parents decide they're not enjoying watching them out the window, and they're getting on the hill. We have a ladies' night on Thursday night. We got about 60 ladies every year. And uh, the ones, a lot of them uh, bring their husbands. And, <laughs> and uh, we had the whole family. So yeah, things are changing significantly. It's pretty awesome. Like there's not many, there's not, it's not like a tourist attraction. So there's not many like tourists right here. It's like ski for yourself, but not just people, people in your way. Smoky Mountain is one of the most beautiful spots in the province. If you're coming to Labrador West, definitely pay a visit. 
We have the people, the building, the snow, everything you could ever ask for on a ski hill. Well, it was a busy weekend in sports for the province's two professional clubs. Antonio Davis there. That is incredibly disrespectful. For it is, it is, play. Nick, and everybody knows that. Yeah, things got a little heated at the end of the game yesterday between Montreal and Newfoundland. There was a tussle involving the rogues Armani Cheney. A few punches were thrown before coolers, cooler heads prevailed, but the damage was done. Montreal downed the home squad 138 to 127. The Tundra took two games in the three-game series. Despite back-to-back -back losses, the rogues still sit in third place. The team will take a short break before hosting the Rhode Island Kraken at the Mary Brown Center on Thursday. Face off, one back by the Growlers from the point to drive. They score! What a blast by Joe Gattenby! In hockey news, the Newfoundland Growlers were upended by the Mariners 5-3 in Maine. The Growlers are still clinging to the final playoff spot in the Eastern Conference just ahead of the Maine Mariners. The Growlers continue their road trip and will head to Worcester, Massachusetts for a three-game series against the Railers. They're expected back on home ice early next month. Well, moving from the ECHL to the NHL, St. John's Alex Newhook had a big night with the Montreal Canadiens. Out of the corner, Pizzetta to the point goalie, a shot tipped in, Alex Newhook. With a the 23-year-old netted two goals for the Habs last night in Seattle. The Canadians went on to defeat the Kraken 5-1. For Newhook, the two goals bring him to a total of 12 on the season and a total of 24 points for the year. I'm a Newfoundlander and I'm proud to say Stand proud and being for Newfoundland, it's 25 years today. Well, if you saw the show on Friday, you may recall that we dipped into the archives and aired this piece on a 25th anniversary of Confederation songwriting contest from the 1970s. Well, I mentioned I was curious about who won that contest, and a viewer wrote to let us know that Beth Harrington was the winner. Beth's tune was the first track on the 1974 vinyl album Songs of Confederation. Thank you so much for letting us know that, Donnie. Oh, it was a beautiful start to the week. We've got one and a half more days of this, but we've got some weather on the way towards the end of the week. I'll get into all the details coming up.
weather update is brought to you by the Healthcare Foundation Home Lottery. The bonus prize deadline is midnight, Friday, April 12th. Order tickets now at hcfhomelottery.ca. Welcome back, Ashley. It's nice to have you back. And it was a lovely day to return to work, having been <laughs> off for a few days last week. Yeah, brought the sunshine mm -hmm. uh, with me for sure. Lovely ridge of high pressure in place, which is uh, leading to a pretty beautiful day. Let's uh, show you just how beautiful that day is with, uh, you know, the lack of cloud cover really visible. What's really visible is the ice, or should I say lack thereof, uh, well below where uh, what we should be seeing as far as that ice is concerned right now. Uh, but yeah, we're seeing that being pushed offshore with that flow at the moment, more of an offshore flow uh, for those of you on the West Coast uh, and is, or rather uh, for the Eastern portion of Labrador. Uh, but yeah, it's pushing that ice off, but there are still quite a few icebergs out there. If we take a look at the latest charts from today, uh, lots off the coast of Labrador and lots being reported as well off the tip of the northern peninsula there. So uh, we will eventually get back into that onshore flow, which will push those icebergs closer. Uh, but there are certainly quite a few out there, which uh, hopefully is, a, is an indication of what's going to happen. But as always, things can certainly change. A uh, beautiful day today. A little cold, though, out there. About minus 4 in St. Anthony this afternoon. Those temperatures above zero, but that was overnight and really into the early morning hours for the eastern half of the island. Up across Labrador, generally uh, sitting into the minus single digits through the day today as well. And uh, if we take a look at where we're sitting right now, Still pretty much right there. Temperatures are dropping, though, across the island at about minus 2 right now in St. John's. Feels more like minus 6. And, uh, like, quite a bit of wind up across Labrador as well, especially towards the coast. Those winds gusting anywhere from 60 to as much as 80 kilometers per hour. And that's generally going to continue as we head through the next 24 hours with those winds gusting all along the coast of Labrador right through Tuesday uh, and into the afternoon hours before we start to see some relief from that. But that ridge of high pressure keeping things quiet across the island, and that is going to keep the winds quiet as well, uh, really only about 5 to 10 kilometers per hour. The ridge of high pressure also going to keep the uh, clouds clear, uh, skies clear through the night tonight. Going to likely see some cloud cover linger across Labrador, but really not a whole lot to talk about. But because uh, we are under some of those clear skies, temperatures are going to drop tonight. Quite chilly up across Labrador, minus 10 to minus 16. Again, some windy conditions, though. So westerlies 40 to 60 kilometers per hour, especially for the north coast. Most of the island will be under those light winds. Uh, but temperatures really dropping, especially in low-lying areas, down to about minus 13 in Grand Falls, Windsor tonight. Otherwise, minus single digits the story. This is well below where we should be sitting this time of year. Tomorrow, ridge of high pressure still in play, which means sunshine, the story. We will see some clouds on the increase, though, up across western portions of Labrador with some flurries as the day goes on. And uh, that's really it. Our next weather maker is in the process of moving in after that, though, especially through the overnight where we're seeing the potential with this next system. Some ice pellets, some freezing rain up across portions of Labrador, but it is going to bring some much milder temperatures as we uh, round out the weekend. Uh, but for now, uh, right out ahead of that, it is going to be a quiet day tomorrow. Temperatures feel very spring-like. Easterly winds, again, really nothing, 5 to 10 kilometers per hour, but 2 to 5 degrees across uh, the eastern portion of the island, anywhere from 3 to 5 through central and along the south coast as well. Lots of sunshine in play. And uh, temperatures towards the west coast will West Coast will be between uh, 5 and 6 as well. Now, up across Labrador, you are going to hang on to those uh, colder temperatures, only about minus 5 in Cartwright tomorrow. Again, winds will eventually ease as the day goes on. Uh, but uh, much colder up across Nain at about minus 8, minus 2 for Happy Valley Goose Bay. But like I said, we are on, uh, on the warm-up uh, by the time we get towards uh, Thursday, even into Friday. And uh, our temperatures could be reaching the double digits across the island. We'll talk all about that in the long range forecast. It's every day. People sell their furniture, this and that, to, to be able to uh, uh, buy drugs. More on our top story. A former MP arrested this weekend. Why he says police aren't doing enough to fight a deadly drug, drug problem in Shahjit.
Returning now to our top story, former Member of Parliament Peter Panashaway was arrested this weekend in Shahajit. This after a long-simmering property dispute with a former Deputy Grand Chief. Panashaway says his son, who struggles with addiction, unlawfully exchanged his house for drugs and that the alleged dealer, Jeremy Andrew, is now selling drugs out of the home. It all came to a head this weekend when Panashaway smashed windows out of a vehicle parked outside. He spoke with our Ariana Kellen earlier today. We're talking to you today from what looks like your home, so I assume you're you're not in police custody right now. No, I, w I was arrested for about an hour and then I was released. And then I was told not to uh, go over to, uh, to Ben's house and that I shouldn't uh, be around uh, Jeremy. So he's well protected. Are you facing oh. any criminal charges right now? I am I am being charged, yes. Uh, my court date is June 24th. And uh, I guess I'm being charged for uh, for um, uh, breaking the the windows of that car that was parked outside Ben's house. And um, I did warn all of them. I told them that uh, at 10.30, if the people are not out of the house, I would uh, break all of the windows in that park in that car that's parked outside the house, which I did. And uh, because we, uh, I mean, that house belongs to uh, my son and his children. We bought it for him, and um, and um, and Jeremy bought it uh, uh, through providing cocaine to uh, to Ben, who was who was a drug addict, and he's now uh, in treatment and recovering. And uh, so the house now seems to be used for as a as a uh, as a drugstore for the community. That's where they sell the drugs. Uh, but it didn't take the police very long to uh, come out and uh, and uh, and uh, arrest me. It took me about uh, I'd say no more than uh, no more than five ten minutes. They showed up and arrested me and put the arm uh, handcuffs on me and uh, arrested me. And uh, so it's uh, I don't know. I don't understand what's going on. Like. Like uh, Jeremy and the drug dealers here are very well protected by the police. You know, obviously something like this that it gets to the point where you go to someone's house and break out windows of a vehicle, it doesn't get like that overnight. So how long has this been been building up? We bought the house in August and uh, and we fixed it up and we bought all kinds of, uh, you know, furniture for our, for our son and our grandkids because they had been living in our basement. So anyway, they moved into the house and been living there for since September, and then he f fall off the wagon and he started uh, drinking again and doing drugs on the street. And uh, so in January, Jeremy bought the house with cocaine. And uh, and according to uh, what Ben is saying is that he bought, he was he sold it for for fifteen thousand, the same price that I bought it f uh, from uh, from uh, Ginger, and he only got like uh, twenty five hundred dollars worth of uh, cocaine. Just to understand how the housing works in this community is that this houses here in this community are social housing, which means that they belong to all, they belong to the band. And the band um, um, customary policy is that if, if you own a house, you can sell it, but you're not supposed to say that you bought, you sold it, and you're just supposed to write a letter saying that you, you gave it to so-and-so. And then that's supposed to be registered with the housing coordinator. And in this case, Apparently, according according to the, uh, uh, the 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 housing coordinator, it's not none of it is registered. Uh, I've I've talked to the chief and council, uh, chief and uh, his workers. The chief tells me that they recognize the first purchase, which is uh, uh, the, the house of Ben. And uh, and I also talked to the uh, um, Sheldon, who is the housing coordinator, who is in charge of the housing, and and he told me they recognize Ben. And, uh, and I also talked to a counselor, Pinote Andrew, and he said there was also, they also recognized uh, um, uh, Ben as the, uh, as, the, uh, as the owner of the house. I went to the RCMP in Goose Bay, talked to the big, uh, the, the, 
uh, the main people there. Mm -hmm. um, went right to uh, uh, inspector and just told him what was going on in the community. I told him who was selling drugs, and um, and uh, yeah, they're working on it, working on a plant. Nothing ever happens, but it's the same story you hear all the time. And so I'm so freaking frustrated about what's going on in this community, mm -hmm. and um, and and I, uh, you know I just. Uh, I, you know, I, I felt I had to do something, and I don't know what that was, but I just felt like, uh, you know, if, if 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 the people that are dealing drugs can come and organize themselves in in in, in Ben's house, then I, you know, then I should have a right to to expose them, which mm -hmm. is what I did, and uh, and now I got a court date, and and that's good because I'm going to drag in a whole bunch of people into the court. How do you know that? Jeremy Andrew is a drug dealer. How, what proof do you it, have that he is? Because I talked to the people that 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 used to use uh, use drugs and that bought drugs from him, and that uh, were in the in the room that when he was doing all these dr drug trades, mm -hmm. and a lot of them are now recovering. And so within the last couple of days, a lot of people are starting to talk about what's going on, and I as I suspect there's going to be more and more information coming out. Um, you know, um, you know, uh, putting all the information together as to who's all tangled up in this. I think this is a much bigger story than uh, than 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 just the house. It's, mm -hmm. it's a it's a it's an organized crime, and they're all and they're all um, involved in it. And uh, and uh, cocaine seems to be the uh, the the big drug here in the community. And apparently, this is what I'm told that in Goose Bay, the drugs are sold on on. On Friday and on Saturday, that's their biggest market. Mm -hmm. And in Shehadid, a population of 2,000 and mostly young people, it's every day. Mm -hmm. So I ask, where does the money come from? People sell their furniture, this and that, to to be able to uh, um, buy drugs. Mm -hmm. And let uh, and let me tell you another fact. I just talked to someone who who's involved in the uh, alcohol counseling, community counseling services. She told me within the last two years of a of, of small population of 2,000, half of that being under under 20, 22 people have 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 died related to drug and alcohol. 22, mm. and that includes suicides. Because what happens is that these are very vicious people. If you owe money, that they put a lot of pressure on you. Uh, you're going to be hurt. You're going to get beat up, and a lot of kids end up committing suicide because of the pressure. I mean that's that's my suspicion, and because there's too, there's too much pressure on on people that are tangled up in the in the trade. And as we heard earlier, Jeremy Andrew asserts he is not a drug dealer. That the sale of Panashway's home was legal, and that Panashway has been targeting him for some time. Meanwhile, the RCMP says cocaine is a drug of choice in communities like Shahajit and Northwest River, but that officers don't have enough information to support a drug trafficking investigation. probably never heard Metallica on a harp before, but Kristen Tuchko has become a TikTok sensation by taking all kinds of different music and playing it on the harp, posting it online. Coming up, she'll tell us about her online popularity and her new album.
When you imagine harp music, you probably think of the soft, soothing, dreamy kind of melodies. Like that. But one St. John's musician has become a TikTok sensation by turning that harp stereotype on its head. Kristen Tuchko has 2.5 million followers on TikTok. And she joins me now. So Kristen, before we get into this incredible following that you have online, can you tell us about your instruments here? Introduce us to your harps. Yeah, so this is my harp, my pedal harp. It's a full-size concert grand pedal harp. Her name is Delilah. And behind me is a electric lever harp. It's a Salvi Delta C, and uh, his name's Samson. <laughs> I love those names. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Why did you choose those names? Um, it was actually the very first orchestral work that I was able to perform with this harp, so I decided to name her Delilah. And this one just seemed like a guy, so I was like, I, had just, I just had to name him Samson <laughs> to match. <laughs> well, you have just been blowing up online, on TikTok in particular. Tell us a little bit about how you got involved and what you've been posting online and why you started posting. Yeah, so it all started during the pandemic. I was working full time as a freelance harpist and all of my work ceased. It just, everything just got shut down. So I was without work and things to do and no concerts to perform and I really did miss it. Uh, I ended up downloading the TikTok app one day and discovered there were other musicians who were kind of in the same boat, also sharing music to the app. And it, but it wasn't the regular classical excerpt. They were doing like really fun video game songs and, and film music and, and pop music. And I was like, this is super fun. But they were doing it really well. They weren't just, it, it was good music. So I was inspired. <laughs> start requesting songs I'm like hey this is fun I feel like I'm, I'm giving back to the community people are enjoying hearing me play so I did another song request and then another one and then some ended up going viral and I just kind of got hooked after that it just it seemed unreal a bit because like little old me from Moncton New Brunswick <laughs> gaining all these followers all of a sudden and for for playing the harp of all things um, I just felt it was amazing for like not only the world of harp, but also the world of classical music that I'm um, showcasing 
an instrument in a new light for an audience that might not necessarily have the opportunity to see an instrument like this up close. I have so many people have written me saying because of me, because of my videos, they've been inspired to start learning the harp. I've had people say that their kid has now wanted to start harp lessons. I've had people say, hey, I've been having harp lessons for six months now and I'm learning this song now because of you. So I feel like I'm, I'm doing, doing good for that world. <laughs> Why do you love the harp so much? What I love about the harp is all the different sounds that it can make. I feel like I have the whole orchestra in the palm of my hands with this instrument and just how versatile it is. Like you can see from my videos, I can do everything from rock to video game music to pretty much anything on the instrument and it, it just makes it a lot more fun. What have some of the most popular videos been? I saw, for example, an ACDC one that you posted had like two million views <laughs> or something. Yeah. Tell us about the, the ones that have hit the hardest when it comes to like viewership and popularity. Black Ops 2, there's a zombies theme. That one just, they love it. <laughs> Everyone goes crazy every time I play that one. Um, also, I've had a few hits from Metallica. Um, every time I play, nothing else matters. And everyone goes crazy for that one as well. <laughs> and Metallica themselves actually responded to that one, right? Yeah. Tell, tell us about that. So crazy. So sometimes when you share your videos, uh, the bands end up seeing the videos and making a comment too. And they actually saw my cover of Nothing Else Matters. I was shocked when I saw their, their uh, username pop up there. And um, I actually loved it so much, uh, their team reached out and asked if my video could be included in their 40th anniversary concert in San Francisco. I think it was San Francisco. Uh, so yeah, so my video was displayed on the big screen there. <laughs> Wild. Can you play a little bit? Yeah, of, for sure. Here you go. Have it for us? Oh, that tune sounds like it was made for the harp. <laughs> it works so well. It translates so well to the instrument. Oh, it is absolutely gorgeous. And I also meant to ask you about how you ended up here in Newfoundland. Because oh, you're yes. from New Brunswick. <laughs> yeah. How did you find yourself living in St. John's? So my husband, because my husband, uh, he got a job teaching at Memorial University, uh, teaching instrumental conducting. So we moved here just as of July this summer. Mm -hmm. And tell us about your album, because you just released an album of all harp music and its covers. Tell, tell us about what's on there. Yes, so the name of the album is Rock Echoes. The type of the music on the album is all rock music from all sorts of genres. The music consists of some fan favorites, but also a few of my personal favorites. I had absolutely no expectations. It's my first album that I'm releasing, and to my surprise, within days of the album releasing, I got an email saying that my album had made the billboard charts. I actually thought it was a fake email at first until I saw the email address. I'm like, oh, this is real. <laughs> it charted number eight on the classical crossover billboard charts. And I found out this week it's climbed its way up to number six now. <laughs> That's amazing. All right, well, Kristen Touchgo, thank you so much for your beautiful performance and uh, telling us all about uh, your gorgeous harp. Really course. appreciate it. It was my pleasure. Thanks so much for having me.
Well, as we head toward the Easter holiday, a traditional treat is getting a lot more expensive. The price of chocolate is rising because of a global shortage of its key ingredient, cocoa. Bad weather and plant disease have reduced cocoa production, mainly in West Africa. The cost of cocoa has more than doubled in the last year, hitting a record high. Another key ingredient in chocolate, sugar, has seen significant price increases over the past three years. Here we go. Have you got this three? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. For the first time in six years, Canada is back on top in women's world curling. Golf for Rachel Homan's rink at uh, the Women's World Curling Championship in Sydney, Nova Scotia. The three-pointer gave them a 7-5 win over Switzerland. It's Homan's second world title. Jennifer Jones was the last Canadian to lead her team to victory at this event, taking top spot in 2018. details.
Okay, so we're going to have a look at the long-range forecast, find out what the rest of the week has in store. Um, good news? Bad news? Uh, good news if you want the snow to go away. Mm -hmm. uh, it does look like we're, we're going to see some warm air for sure, but it is obviously going to bring some weather with it. So let's just yes, jump right into it. Uh, as we head into Thursday e or Tuesday evening, rather, and into uh, our Wednesday. So this is when our next system will move in. That pink there that you see heading towards Labrador is actually going to be a, a mix. We could see some ice pellets. We could also see some freezing rain with this one as well. So definitely going to keep an eye on this system. But the time frame of that will be through the afternoon hours and into Wednesday evening. And then across the island, other than the northern peninsula, most of us will see rain. But really, that rain won't arrive for eastern areas of the island until the overnight. But yes, some snow. And that ice pellet mixture will head towards the coast of Labrador by the time we get into uh, the evening hours. Temperatures, though, on the opposite side of this or on the, the southern side of this uh, front will be warmer. So you will see that ice pellet freezing rain potential for the west, Lab West, change over to rain by the time we get into the evening because your temperatures are going to bump up. And then anywhere from 2 to about 6 degrees across the majority of the island, except for the northern peninsula, where you will sit into the minus single digits. So that means the potential for some ice pelts, maybe even some freezing rain before you see that transition. So this area of low pressure is going to stick with us for a little while. The southerly flow going to stick around through Thursday. And this is when we'll see the majority of the rain and milder temperatures move in across the island uh, through the day on Thursday. And then things will start to quiet down up across the big land uh, through the evening hours on Thursday. But yes, again, temperatures will be mild. We're talking about double digits potentially through central parts of the west coast. Uh, but anywhere from 6 to about 12 degrees northern peninsula, you will sit in the mid-single digits as well. Again, with the potential for some showers. And we've got those mild temperatures up across Labrador. 5 to 9 degrees as your daytime high on Thursday. The northern peninsula, though, you're going to stay, or northern peninsula, northern Labrador, uh, you are going to sit into the minus single digits through the day on Thursday. Long-range forecast showing temperatures will stay well above zero, even in the overnight as we get through to Saturday. Again, Friday, some showers possible. Saturday, some showers possible, but we may see some peaks of sun in the mix there. Will be uh, more gray, especially through central. Same thing for the western portion of Labrador with our temperatures uh, somewhere between 10 to 12 degrees as our daytime highs. And then for Labrador, you're looking at your daytime highs staying up above zero right into next or to the weekend as uh, we sit around uh, three degrees for uh, Saturday and the chance of some showers. And then that will be uh, once we see some showers on Thursday, things will start to cool down and uh, the return of some snow will move in as well. Now, our lovely photo of the day today. This one is uh, George Park Trail in uh, just outside of Grand Falls, Windsor there. Hayward oh. uh, shared this lovely shot with us. Certainly feeling like spring out there, isn't it? Yes, it's nice to see the snow take a little bit of a cutting there. And pretty soon things are going to be growing again. I can feel it. It's right around the it's corner. It's right around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> certainly, it certainly feels like, yeah. yeah. Uh, if you have any weather photos you'd like to share with us, you can send them to nlphotos at cbc.ca. Yeah, and it's nice to see some double digits coming in the forecast. I feel like it's been a while. It has been a while. seen that, yeah. yeah. Oh, All right. I like that. <laughs> me too. Me too. Okay. So uh, thank you so much for spending part of your evening us, with us. But we're going to leave you uh, this evening with a beautiful performance from the musician you met a little bit earlier in the show. So uh, we're going to let her take it away. Good night. Good night. Hi, my name is Kristen Tuchko, and this is Love of My Life by Queen. <laughs>